After Netflix announced that Henry Cavill was walking away and Liam Hemsworth was stepping forward as Carol of Rivia for Witcher Season 3, a roar could be heard amongst the Witcher fans. And you can almost still hear it. Hi, my name is Nacho, welcome back to the channel. So this video started as something completely different. I was just gonna do a quick one on Henry leaving The Witcher and going back to being Superman, but somehow that led me into a rabbit hole of the future of the DCEU. So what did I find out? Let's start with the catalyst of this pursuit. So not long ago, Henry announced his departure from The Witcher after not agreeing with the direction that the showrunners and writers were choosing for the show, which was basically as far away from the source material as possible. After him leaving, Liam Hemsworth was announced as a new girl and fans didn't quite vibe with that. So much that a petition was created to bring back Henry and instead fired the writers who explicitly said hated the source material and the games. Now this petition started very modestly like let's get 50 to 75k signatures just to show our discontent. At the time of this video being made that petition has been signed 284 thousand times. Good heavens. So I'd say there's a lot of sentiment to have Henry back, which leads us to the next part of the journey, the official trailer for The Witcher Blood Origins. Oh, is this anything like the DLC Blood and Wine where Gale has to face against a powerful ancient vampire gone rogue with the help of another powerful vampire to protect the culture rich and colorful city of Tucson? No. Ew. No. This is a diverse and inclusive story about the rise of minorities against an established patriarchal ruler with a strong cast of female roles who lead warriors in a blood epic that also touches some themes like the unlikely love between two interracial characters that are not supposed to be together by society standards. You know, to better reflect the world we live in today. Oh. One of those. Oh. Needless to say that the first trailer is already getting the reflection of the modern society treatment that brings a power god. And imagine if they didn't have Michelle Yeoh or Joy Beatty in it. But in short, Blood Origins meant to tell the story about the birth of the first Witcher and the conjunction of the spheres, which is the event that brought all the monsters and magic into the world. Which is a very interesting story to hear, it's mentioned in the games a lot. I'll say it right now, I didn't read the books but I played the shit out of the games, but I have the feeling that that's not the story that the writers are gonna wanna tell. The Witcher's showrunner Lauren Hisrich this week addressed Cavill's exit from the series and the mixed fan reaction. They weren't mixed, we hated it. The worst thing that could have happened to your show is losing Henry. I was okay with Fringilla Beagle being on the opposite side of the chromatic scale from the actual game book character. I was okay with Triss not being a redhead and then being kind of a redhead in the second season. I was less than okay with the Witchers being super weak and dying against the one thing they are engineered to be good against, Jennifer's not hot, but all that tolerance came from Henry being Geralt. He was your cornerstone, the leader of your pack, the bond to your Clyde, the copy to your shack. Without him, your entire house of cards comes crashing down. But it's okay because the showrunner Lauren Histrich is encouraging fans to come and watch the show regardless. Yeah, how's that encouraging work for you so far? And this is where the next part of the rabbit hole goes, because after leaving the Witcher, Henry was supposed to go back to his role as Superman. And this was further reassured in the post credit scenes in Black Adam that featured Henry back in his caped outfit, which The Rock literally had to fight tooth and nail for. And Cavill posting about coming back to the role, there were little doubts that we were gonna get a new Man of Steel movie. And fans were really happy about it. Look, I'm not the biggest DC fan, I've always been more inclined towards Marvel despite the relentless effort to change that as of late, but despite me being sad for losing Geralt, I was happy that we were gonna get that Superman. But recent news of the next Man of Steel being cancelled and DC dropping Cavill had me and the fandom wondering, why are they so focused on losing their money? Why do they keep shedding on the Golden Goose nest? I never agree with the EA business model of milking the cow until there's nothing left, but they have nothing left. Henry Cavill prints money which is why you want to use him, put him in the game. Don't recast Superman to be black or gay to please an audience that doesn't exist. Just give us a good movie, a good movie that makes money. You need Henry for that. DC so far is planning on dropping some of the most profitable characters. Wonder Woman 1984 didn't do so well, so Wonder Woman 3 is most likely not happening. That's not too much of a loss, although I really like the first one. Jason Momoa leaving the role of Aquaman after Lost Kingdom to potentially be recast as Lobo, which kills the Aquaman franchise for a while. And at this point, it's easy to say that the Snyderverse that we were hoping was going to be developed after the Snyder Cut post credit scenes is dead. Dead! Gutted by the hands of James Gunn himself. So what's left for the DC Universe? Well, here's where the rabbit hole goes into a fork. On one side, you got the weight that's being put on the new Flash movie, setting up the reintroduction of Michael Keaton as Batman, as part of the when in doubt, let's mess with time travel lifeline, which will all be tied with the events of Aquaman The Lost Kingdom, having potential Keaton and Affleck making an appearance as Batman, that I'm guessing is an attempt to bring back old fans and new fans back into the franchise. 
Batman has always been a good character, even since the days of Adam West. But what about... We don't need to talk about those. However, on the other hand, if that doesn't happen because the movie gets delayed or cancelled, that being by the hand of Ezra Miller being an actual men's society, how is this guy still working but you can, Henry, you fucking idiot? Which would mean not having Keaton at all reprise his role and continue with Affleck as the face of Bruce Wayne for the following movies, if there are any. And as I mentioned prior, losing your lead role as Aquaman creates a very steep hole to climb out of, given the love that fans had for Momoa as Arthur Curry, and well, Amber Heard literally shedding her career. My dog stepped on a bee. That's fine, we can recast her. Which means that something would need to be done if they plan to keep chaining these movies to create a DCEU, if there's even an intention for that. But I'm gonna go into a YouTuber prediction mode and say that the building of superhero franchises and universes is coming to an end. I know that the witch is not gonna recover. No disrespect to Leon Hemsworth, but burning your fans like that, I don't really feel that's gonna work out for you. All because they didn't like Henry being on the side of fans and wanting more respect towards the lore. But what do you think? Would Netflix and DC recover after losing Henry? Let me know in the comments below and as always, I've been Nacho. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.